Hi everybody and welcome to the uh, shop. Kind of a strange name for a, uh, a little beast here and today I'm going to be do doing something very interesting. It's not often that uh, something that uh, is small is generally dangerous here and I'm talking about in the world of uh, amplifiers and things and of all the uh, all the amplifiers and all the electronic products you see here, oscilloscopes and signal generators and amplifiers and frequency counters and and uh, 50 amplifiers and 50 receivers, by far of everything on the uh, Rancho here, this little unit, the uh, True Test Stereo 5, made in Japan, it was part of a Lafayette radio, I think in 19. 60 um, is without the most dangerous, without a doubt, the most dangerous but the coolest product here on the uh, Rancho. And uh, well, I'll bring you into the uh, table side here up to the uh, workbench and we'll take a look and I'll, I'll point out some of the features of a really cool, what we call, we call it, Jen and I call it Little Toot here, but it's Little Toot can be a killer if you're not careful, okay? Small, powerful, cool, but uh, potentially lethal. Okay, I'll bring in, I'm showing the uh, original advertisement that appeared in the uh, newspapers and things, and uh, especially magazines that appealed to men. And this was a uh, really cool because high fidelity was really getting to be the big thing in the 50s and 60s, and so was stereo. Broadcast stereo was still a few years away, but if you had a uh, record player and you had uh, stereo records, which was quite an in innovation in itself, being able to play two channels with one needle on one, uh, on one groove, and we'll talk about that on a later uh, video, but if you had that, you could put your phono input there and really get uh, cool stereo. Well... For the spanking price of $9.99, you got uh, something that could be stereo and also mono. And the, uh, they had this as an advertising point that it was a self-contained AC-DC power supply. Well, one cool thing about this is these things go for about $150, sometimes $175, because they're cool little units. And if you do the uh, rate of return on investment, in other words, if you bought one of these for $9.95 and sat on it for, oh, the better part of uh, 45, uh, 50 years here, you would have like a rate of return of about 5%, which puts you right up there with uh, Warren Beth Buffett and <laughs> legendary investors like that. But so much for that. Let's go down and take a look at it now. Because one of the things that uh, makes this scary and the weak part uh, about it, and it's a product that could not be sold today and Ralph Nader would not be worrying about Corvairs unsafe at any speed with the True Test uh, uh, stereo here. Five, the reason being is it, if you look inside and under the uh, chassis here, what you don't see is one of these. And this is a power transformer. And if you look at almost any amplifier, stereo receiver, uh, electronic, consumer electronic product, audio video, it's going to have a transformer in it. And what this does is isolate ground and things and uh, make these units safe when they're built into it. But as this thing is designed, you can see the uh, plug here. Imagine this is plugged. It's two-pronged. And instead of going into my isolation transformer, and we'll talk about why I need that in a minute, you just plug this directly into the wall, and guess what? There's your, uh, there's your hot power coming right in to the unit without any, sort of, uh, without any sort of transformer sort of inductively moving that power to a uh, sa safer and an isolated sort of, uh, in an isolated way, so that you're protected. As it is now, since you are actually a great path to ground, meaning any person that's touching this, since it's not a run on a power transformer as it's sold, if you touch this and touch something uh, in the wrong way, ch touch the chassis and touch ground, well, you're, lot and, you're hot and live to the chassis here, and you touch ground, you're going to get one wheel and a hell of a shock on this thing. But once you run it through a transformer, and I have an isolation transformer, and if it had a power supply, 
Now, arguably, that would have made it more expensive than uh, $9.99, but if you had a power supply, it would have that isolation aspect where you could uh, touch it and fiddle it. Well, you don't want to touch it with two hands and things. Just You don't want to be an idiot. But uh, you're a lot safer than uh, without having the transformer. So what, uh, so what I did was I bought a little isolation transformer for about uh, $10 just so we could safely uh, run the unit. I plug it into this. Not only does it protect everything on the household circuits in case this uh, little son of a bitch runs away, but pardon my language, it also uh, it also protects me as I'm uh, talking and discussing the unit. Well, when Jen and I first got this uh, unit, a couple it's been sitting for a long time, and when I unboxed it and put it on a Wednesday night and slowly brought the power up, man, it just smoked and stunk up the place. And all you heard out of the audio was just mm, this 60 cycle hum out of it. And it absolutely sucked. So what I did was go through and I have this uh, ESR meter here. And this is a cool little device that allows you to actually uh, test electronic components in circuit. And I tested this big, uh, this big can ca uh, electrolytic capacitor. It has three different values in it. A 60 microfarad, a 30 microfarad, and a 20. Well, they're way off value now, but uh, still basically works. But the uh, 20 microfarad tested uh, dead, and I can sort of demonstrate that by getting it onto it here, and then putting the other lead of the ESR onto the. Uh, let me see if I can get that uh, onto that uh, black. It's a little difficult. Pardon my camera work. I'm trying to. Uh, Get this thing sort of hooked onto that, and then hook this onto the uh, silver lead if I can, right here. There we go. I don't want to short anything out. And then we test it, run a test on it. It picks up C for capacitor. And uh, right now, probably because I have this, uh, I have this. Uh, replacement uh, capacitor electrolytic that I just have temporarily hooked up here. It's probably uh, picking up that instead of this uh, thing. So we'll disconnect this. And I like to be able to use alligator leads because they allow me to uh, test stuff without soldering and unsoldering. So we'll try it again. And we'll see what it gets now. It should be uh, Oh, the, uh, sorry, the uh, lead popped off there. Let me pop it on. Again, it's kind of hard when you have so much uh, stuff hooked on under here. Here we go. Now we'll run the test again on it. And if it takes a long time, it's generally indicating that it's not liking the part. And this little, uh, well, I'll explain. Yeah, it's it's a damaged part. Well, there's three different electrolytic capacitors inside this unit. Two of them are okay, but the last one is just absolutely uh, is absolutely smoked here. So we can take off the uh, test leads uh, for testing it. We already know it's bad. And what I did was just add add one back in here, about the same approximate value and. I'm not real anal retentive about capacitors. There's people that do electronic projects, and uh, you know everything's got to be exactly uh, exactly with the replace the same values and all that stuff. Well, I don't do that. I get uh, you know approximate a little more capacitance is okay and all that. So you know, believe me, uh, this unit too. I thought it was originally bad. You see this 0 0.05 microfarad high voltage, 400 uh, volts. Uh, WV means working voltage here, and there's a lot of voltage. These things can kill you. I mean, they can they can induce a heart attack. You screw around with these uh, uh, capacitors when they have a charge. You know, you're a capacitor to your body if you've ever had a static electricity charge, and you understand when uh, what a discharge is when you act like a capacitor when you touch somebody and they get a static shock. Well. Imagine that multiplied by about 400 times, and one of these uh, babies could deliver the, one of them to you. So, 
this actually had tested out uh, okay, so I've temporarily left that. It, sometimes it tested good, sometimes it tested bad, and we have a uh, an electrolytic uh, capacitor down there. But uh, actually, once I was able to uh, sort of lay this in as a replacement, and let me move the uh, cord here, and we'll uh, go ahead and we'll get... Uh, We'll get her, uh, this is not the end of this uh, thing by any means because I want to be able to do a restoration on this. I'm, I'm line feeding in from the uh, computer now here into the side of the uh, true test here. And I think you're going to be amazed at the sound that it has just pulling this capacitor in and putting this one in and effectively bypassing that bad one in the can. The, uh, the job it does. So I'm going to pop the... Uh, pop the unit on now power up and you can see that initial burst is that stored energy in the capacitor goes into the AX12 AX7 this is a preamp tube it picks up the initial signal that's going to be coming out of the uh, Don't worry, we're going to have a good uh, good go of the music at the end. 